Alright, now let's see this model in action. So we're going to run our first simulation in this lecture. But first we'll have a look into the simulation settings. So if you click on this cog icon here, we can set the simulation start time and the simulation stop time, and also the simulation time step. So for running an annual simulation, which is most common, run from 0 hours to 8760. So this is a number you'll become familiar with, that's the number of hours in a full year. Then we have the simulation time step. So for running annual simulations quickly, just to get a rough idea, You've, you set a more fine time step, so 0 0.25 or sometimes even one hour. But if you t set this time step too coarse, it won't give you realistic results at all. When you're running uh, proper simulations, you might even want to do it as fine as 0 0.02 or 0 0.01 hours, depending on what you're simulating. But we'll simulate now between 0 and 8760 and also have a look through these advanced settings. You can set the solution method, the tolerances, and also the deck file name. So you can give this a, a customized title. So let's go ahead and run the simulation. So you either click here or you can press the F8 button. So while that sets up, and here we go. So we're simulating for a full year, and you can see it's moving quite quickly. What's going on here? Well, what I'll do now is pause the simulation by pressing F7, or just clicking on the screen, and that will halt our simulation. So how the plotters work is we have two axes. So we have a left axis. In this case, it's been set up for temperatures, the scale of 0 to 150. And then on the right hand side we have a right axis which is set up for heat transfer rates. But these aren't these aren't always both heat transfer rates. But it's it's so you can have a different scale on the two sides. So on the right axis we have G col, which is the amount of radiation on the collector, and MD col, that's the mass flow rate through the collector. On the left hand side we have the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature of the collector. And sometimes you want to isolate some variables. So we can just click on these labels and they'll disappear. And because this is so compressed, we can't actually see what's going on here. So what I might like to do is zoom into the plot, or just say a one week. And then when I maximize this, I can actually see in much closer detail the inlet and outlet temperatures for the collector over the course of each day of a week. And you might actually want to see the, the exact values along these lines. So what you can do is hold down the shift key and move the cursor. Now on the top left hand side of the screen you can actually see the exact value at certain points in time. It's quite useful for debugging, troll strategies and the like. Another thing you can do is change the appearance of the plot to have a white background and maybe thicker lines. This might be better for some presentations or if you're copying this into a report. Also, note down on the bottom we have another graph. So this is because the simulation has two plotters set up, so we can actually see multiple plots all in the same window just by clicking between the tabs. So these are all the temperatures inside the tank. So you can usually set up a different plotter for each component to see all the outputs for each component. Or you can create a double online plot with two different plots on the same page. Press F8 again and the simulation will continue. And we'll run it right to the end. See how it appears down here as a double online plot. We can still swap between the, the different 
plots. Here we go, calculations complete. We can now exit the plot. And to finish, we'll just have a look at the results that this present this simulation has created. So down here, it's set up with an integrator and a plotter. So that is integrating outputs from each of the components, doing some calculations in this calculation component, and printing them to a file. So if we go to the external files tab, we can see they're printed to the totals.txt text file. If I click edit, I can read the results. We're going to go through all of this in a lot more detail in the next few lectures, but this just gives you an introduction into what Transis is capable of. And in the next lecture, we're going to start creating this model from scratch.